Hey, what's up, everybody? So I was going to talk about the fluid morph effect, which is in come standard in Avid. It's in this thing called illusion effects. All these effects, I very, very rarely, probably never used most of them. I would think you would use them if you were working on cartoons, animation type stuff. But fluid morph is something that is kind of used or thought to be used to cover jump cuts. And I'm going to show you uh, some, some stuff about why I don't think that works and, and how I use the effect, even though I will say automatically I use this effect extremely, extremely rarely. So sometimes you might, you want, might want to take, you know, an um out of an interview, but you have no other B-roll, you have no other way to go. So the thought is that this fluid morph can morph the face, the action in, in such a way that you won't see the jump. I don't believe that to be true. But the first thing to think about, when you put this fluid morph on, um, you see it, it's morphing the issue of her mouth, which is getting really weird. But it comes on at a, as a 30-frame transition, 30-frame effect, effect. So that will never really work. The only way it might work is if you make an ad edit, I don't know, two frames, three frames, something like that, maybe even you know two frames total. And when you put drag the effect on, you could hit size to fit. And now, in theory, you might be able to get a jump cut, but not here, you won't, um, where you don't see the, the edit, right? And the fluid morph makes it happen. Here's one where I actually did use it. Her, let's go, if we go to the raw, her face was here, and in between this, she said, um, and then her face was to here. So the cut is a jump cut. Right. That was the jump. And I used the fluid morph in, let's see, a total of six frames. And if we look at it here on this monitor. There's a slight morphing in the hair, but when it plays down, you really don't see it. And it covered that jump cut to a certain degree. Now, this is different, too, because this. I used this where it wasn't a full screen shot, right? You have a lot going on here. You have graphics moving. You have two boxes. So that's something that can hide. In a sense, she's much smaller on the screen. It was a, it was a jump cut of, of a tiny part of the screen, in a sense, as opposed to when you're doing a full screen interview where someone's up there like that. I, I really don't think it works. Um, you even see sometimes in political videos or whatever that people are like, look, they use the morph cut because you can you can see it. It's very rare that you can use this fluid morph on a jump cut and make it seem like it's seamless. So what would you use fluid morph for? One thing I think that is awesome to use it for is the passage of time. In this case, I had a video a while ago where we had these guests on the show and they came back like 15 years later. And this one, it's okay, right? This was her 15 years ago, and you use this fluid morph to kind of, it just gives an effect that, in a sense, time is passing, right, really quickly. But I want you to see how it did with this one. Now, this one, his face was the same exact way, leaning the same way, right? So here he is as a 20-year-old, here he is as a 40-year-old, or whatever it was, and you put a nice sound effect on it. In this case, I had, like, a nice cymbal hit, and that's a really cool transition to get to show the passage of time, okay? So I I will occasionally bust out this fluid more. I want to show the passage of time, whether it's someone's age in a face, I don't know, a house 40 years later, um, if you had two stills of a house from in the difference of 40 years, or, or, or a plant or a tree that's, that's 100 years old, right? That could be a good use of this fluid morph. I should have mentioned this earlier. There are settings in the fluid morph that might affect how good it works. You can go still to still, stream to stream. You know, I, I don't know these off the top of my head. I don't know exactly and even these input parameters. I don't know what will change and affect anything to such a great degree because I, I don't spend the time using it. I spend the time, my extra time to drink beer. I'm not going to spend time figuring out this fluid morph effect. It's just not worth it for me. But you know, if you do pop it on, you might want to try to adjust some of these parameters. I don't even know what the border does at all. If someone knows that, please comment. Please list that in the comments below. There, you know, there's an example of there's many things I don't know. Just like there's many beers I haven't drank let yet. But that's what uh, life is all about. Holiday season's here. Uh, I hope everybody's doing safe. 
and gets through this virus and, and, and your family, and we all get through this virus situation okay, and then we have a beer together in person. I hope that gives you some insight into that idea of a morph cut or the fluid morph tool in Avid. And if you know anybody that's looking to learn Avid, from, tell them to go to avidbeer.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.